Hey guys, it's Kelton here, and I just wanted to show you a little circuit I made that generates some um, decently high voltage. So this circuit is very similar to a jewel thief. In fact, it basically is a jewel thief, except for there's an extra coil, I think, uh, on the um, output of the, on the transformer. So um, here's a schematic. Sorry about the bad handwriting. I just did it quickly. So um, here's our transistor. I would use a um, 2N3904. Oh, I have one right here. Yep, here it is. 2N3904, I think this one is. Focus. Focus. Anyway, this is the 2N3904. And uh, I'm going to use a 470 ohm um, base resistor. Also, for the uh, you don't, there's no coil winding necessary for this jewel thief. So, for the um, transformer, or coils, I'm using this uh, Fillmore transformer that I got uh, a little while ago, later today, earlier today. Uh, here's the box. So, it's a four and a half volts, center tapped. Center tapped is important. It must be center tapped, otherwise it won't work. So, here's the um, two outer leads, which on the schematic is um, this top here and this bottom here. And the center tap is also needed. So basically, you need to connect to the center tap here to the positive of your supply. Uh, I would say I can get a little bit of voltage output, about 40 volts AC, on one and a half volt, one and a half volts in. Although I recommend like three or volts or maybe five volts on the uh, power supply here. It only pulls about 300 milliamps at the maximum if you're shorting out the output. Also, the output current is like 350 to 400 microamps at 70 kilohertz. This is a 60 hertz transformer, so that's pretty much safe. It's not going to be able to output enough current to hurt you, luckily. Otherwise, this project would be a um, dangerous one. Luckily, no, dis no disclaimer needed. All right, so I have the circuit now built on the breadboard. Here are the uh, input wires coming from my um, boost buck converter set to 3 volts output. I have a maximum current of about 400 milliamps limited in case something goes wrong. That way you don't have a nice happy fire, as you can see happened before down here. Here's our um, 470 ohm resistor for the base, which basically gets connected to one of these wires here, doesn't really matter, and the other one gets connected to the transistor's collector. So um, I'll, I'll link the schematic in, in the uh, description below where I found this. And then here's the output here. They're just on this voltage rail here. I have a neon di connected directly across it. There's no resistor, which is probably a bad idea, but since the maximum current is only a couple, a couple hundred microamps, it's not too big of a problem. All right, now with the current at 300 milliamps and the voltage at 3 volts, and if I hit OK, watch the neon light. Now it's a constant voltage out, 3 volts, and the neon light is lit. Let's see if I can cover that up a little bit. So you can see it there. It's kind of, it looks pretty white, but um, in real life it looks pretty orange. Just the paper I'm probably throwing my camera off here. It's only a phone camera. Anyway, if I come here, hit this uh, OK button, I think it is, we're drawing about 159 um, milliamps. Now, do you think I should touch these two wires? Because it's only a few hundred microamps. So, so if I touch the two wires here, the current actually drops a little bit. I don't feel anything at all. Because the current output's so low, it's not any problem. This transformer is not very efficient at 70, 70 kilohertz because it's more it's meant for something like 60 hertz. This, um, if you use a switching power supply uh, transformer, I'd uh, be careful. These 2N3904s cannot handle that amount of current because a certain switching power supply transformer is rated at these 70 kilohertz frequencies. So it will um, just go crazy and draw all the current it can. Also, it's more of a shock hazard because it's too, a lot more current. So I am now measuring the output of this uh, transformer right across, as you can see, right across the uh, neon bulb there. I'm measuring it on the oscilloscope, and it seems to be a uh, uh, lower frequency, about 52 kilohertz. Sorry, it's not focusing very well. Anyway, you can see it's not a very stable output. So basically, if, it, if, we, if I touch this, now I'm putting more load on it. I'm squeezing my fingers, now I'm just barely touching it. You can see the uh, in the bottom right corner, it says amplitude. <laughs> Changes a lot, so it's not a very stable output, obviously, because this is only a multi, uh, only a three-component circuit. So it, aren't, it isn't very good. About 
maintaining constant frequencies and stuff like that. Like, let's see here, I'm gonna turn the voltage down a little bit. The fre frequency changes a little bit. Now let's take the voltage up, three volts. If I put in about 4.4 volts, the output's a really nice clean sine wave though. And my neon, for some reason, has decided to stop running. And if I take the voltage up to like six and a half volts, as you can see, we're having a um, about 200 volts peak to peak. Now, of course, if I touch that, it all goes away because my finger takes all the power. One other interesting thing I figured out is that the voltage is now, uh, let's move the camera, the voltage is now um, 3.7 volts in. There's no LED at all. Yet, if I, turn, if I take the voltage down a little bit, there's no neon at all. I take the voltage down below 3 volts, the neon comes back on. And our voltage goes, starts to go kind of crazy in the oscilloscope there. So, in conclusion, I think this is a pretty cool project to do at home. Not super dangerous, so might be kind of fun. Goodbye.